これらのトップアプリで日本旅行をもっと楽にしましょう Make Japan travel easier with these top apps. Traveling to Japan is easier than what you might expect, but for some people, navigating the land of the rising sun can seem a little bit stressful, especially if it's their first time visiting. But thankfully, technology comes to the rescue. Hi, I'm Nathan Ninja Monkey, and I've been traveling to Japan for nearly a decade as a tourist. I make videos for those of you who might be interested in or wanting to explore this incredibly beautiful country. So, if you want to get an experienced tourist point of view, you've come to the right place. So, here are some of the top apps that I use when I travel around Japan Google Maps. I think this one needs no introduction, and 100% the number one app that I use whilst navigating around Japan. There are many features to talk about, but I'm going to focus on the three that I use the most for travel around Japan. And although obvious, there are a few hidden features that you might not know are there. Number one, directions within a city or town. Google Maps makes it a breeze when navigating to or from a train station from your location or generally to wherever you might want to go. On the Google app, on the smartphone, simply search for your end destination and tap on directions. Add your starting point and change your routing option to transit. You can even change the departure time and date if this is something that you know or want to plan for a future trip. Google Maps will display the many transit options, including the walking time, trip length, arrival time, and estimated price. And by selecting the trip that interests you, you'll get even more instructions that can be very useful. For example, stops, changes, best boarding positions for quick exits, and closest exit with map view. Following the exit signs in the station will make it easy to arrive near to your destination, many times avoiding busy crossings, the summer heat, or rain in a cooler, air conditioned, or heated environment. Intercity travel for longer distances using the Shinkansen with the JR Pass. Okay, it's important to note that you cannot currently use the JR Pass on certain routes. For example, the faster Nozomi and Mizuo trains on the Tokaido, Sanyo, and Kyushu Shinkansen lines, which Google will usually favor because they tend to be faster. This can be confusing for most tourists, but you can use Google Maps to route you to another city using the Shinkansen and dive deeper to find a route suitable even when using the JR Pass. And this is how you do it. In a similar way, simply set your final destination to the city or station or the hotel in a different city, bearing in mind that the Shinkansen leaves from only Ueno, Tokyo and Shinagawa stations within Tokyo, depending on where you're traveling to and that you will be routed via these. If you're using the JR Pass, then simply navigate to the Shinkansen and tap for more options, choosing one of the Shinkansen trains that are available using the JR Pass to see timings to help you plan and navigate via that route. It's quite simple, really. Live view. This is a bit of a bonus tip that I use all the time when traveling around Japan. For those moments when you're kind of not sure where the compass is pointing and what direction to start walking, in, <laughs> simply access live view from your current direction to get an easy to use augmented live view with arrows to navigate to your destination or at least get you walking in the right direction. It's pretty amazing. There is so much more that I recommend you explore in Google Maps. It really is a comprehensive navigation tool that can help you find directions to places, explore local attractions and discover restaurants, shopping areas, hotels, check out photos, menus, opening and closing times, explore street view to familiarize yourself with an area before exploring and provide multiple transportation options like walking, driving, public transit and even ferries. Japan travel by Navi time. When it comes to navigating Japan, there are more than just Google Maps and I know that it's all up to preference. I like to use a combination of both. I usually navigate towards Google Maps on my day to day within Japan but I use an every time for planning my trips and routes ahead of time, as it does offer a filter for the JR Pass and other passes into its results. Therefore, probably making this one of the clearest and easiest tools for JR Pass users. Simply head to the route option to input your departure and destination, just like Google Maps. You can also change the date and the time of your trip, which is useful when you're planning in advance, and most importantly, add a ticket. 
and select the pass that you're going to use. For example, the Japan Rail Pass or one of the many other regional passes that are available. From here on, the results will reflect and only show options using the pass that you've chosen, which is absolutely fantastic. There are so many transit cards available, but Suica is probably the one to rule them all. Suica is a prepaid card used for moving around and shopping in Japan. There are many versions of this card, including a registered, unregistered, and a welcome to a Suica, which makes for a great prepaid card if you're traveling with kids because you can top it up as needed and it's accepted in many stores and vending machines for smaller purchases. However, I actually use Suica virtually as it's available as an Apple Pay card and it's actually really easy to set up. Best of all, you'll be able to top it up by using Apple Pay without needing to visit any top app locations. And this is how you do it. Head to your Apple wallet and tap on the add icon. Head down to travel cards and search for Japan, which will show you the Suica as an option, which is what you should be selecting. Follow on-screen instructions and simply add to the balance and accept the terms and conditions and top up your new card using one of your cards using Apple Pay. And there you go. You now have a shiny new Suica, which will be available with your other Apple Pay cards on your phone's wallet, <laughs> which is usually called up when you double side click. You can even set it up as an express travel card, meaning that you simply tap in and out of stations without needing to authenticate. Simply head to the wallet and Apple Pay section of the system-wide settings and add it as an express card. And as a bonus, you'll have access to your balance and latest transactions, including map views of your trips, which is a great way of keeping track of where you've been in the city. Unfortunately, to the best of my knowledge anyway, Suica is only available for iPhone and Apple Watch and not currently available for Android devices registered outside of Japan. However, there is the IC Card Reader app for Android which lets you check the balance and transaction history of your Suica card, at least giving you an indication of the balance at a glance. Google, Google Translate. Although most Japanese people might find it hard to reply in English, Google Translate is an app I tend to use less and less on each trip. Basic knowledge of Japanese and gestures will usually get you a long way. Most major cities, hotels and bigger stores will also have some understanding of English. However, there are some killer features that I do occasionally use. The Google Translate lens is great for printed menu items and signs in general, or to try to figure out instructions, for example, when using the toilet or figuring out general packaging instructions. And although Google Translate has a conversation feature, I tend to find this to be more of a gimmick and I prefer writing out what I want to say and show the person I'm communicating with. But yes, Google Translate is a valuable app, which although not always accurate, will be good enough most of the time and help you communicate when you need it the most. This one's kind of an app or not quite, I'm not too sure, but I'm talking about travel cards. Prepaid travel cards or travel money cards are increasingly becoming more popular. It's a popular way to carry money when traveling abroad. And for me, I'd say it's been a bit of a game changer. There are many popular ones, for example, TransferWise, which is also known as Wise, and Revolut, which is the one that I use. In the case of Revolut, it's an app that is accompanied by physical cards, allowing me to load multiple currencies onto a card at a time. and means that you can lock in your exchange rate in advance, which can protect you from fluctuating exchange rates during your trip. I usually top up with my yen wallet when the exchange rate is favorable and use a physical card in the same way as a debit or credit card for payments. In the case of Revolut, there are very low or no foreign transaction fees and I use it to pay for my hotels at major stores and also to take out cash at ATMs. I actually have three different Revolut cards, two of which I freeze so that they're disabled and one which I carry on me. In the unlikely event that I lose or have my main card stolen, I can quickly freeze that card and enable a new one. It's kind of a bit of a pro tip. It is important, however, to note that there might sometimes be fees attached to certain things. For example, in my case, a monthly limit of 400 pounds when withdrawing from an ATM. That's around 70,000 yen before it incurs a charge of 2% or one pound, whichever is higher, which is more than enough for me as a big chunk of my usage is free. A travel card app is very useful, so I do suggest that you explore one that works well for you. Earth 
Earthquake Alert. <laughs> earthquake Alert. Yureguru Call is a popular earthquake alert app in Japan. Japan is located in a seismically active region and experiences frequent earthquakes. So apps like Yureguru provide valuable real-time information and early warnings to residents and visitors. In addition, and in the case of an iPhone user, you can also change your region to Japan to unlock emergency alerts by going to the settings, notifications, scrolling down to the bottom of the screen, tapping emergency alerts and turning them on or off. Thankfully, this is an app I haven't really needed to use too often, but I think it's important to highlight. eSIM connectivity. eSIM or embedded SIM is relatively new technology. So if your phone isn't too old, you can take advantage of this technology that has a variety of advantages compared to traditional physical SIM cards. There are many eSIM companies with different plans that can be purchased before or during your trip to Japan. This means that you can have data services from the moment you step off the plane without needing to queue up or pick up any physical equipment. It also means that if you ever were in need of a data connection at short notice, you could easily purchase a plan and have it active and ready to use at a moment's notice. eSIMS apps usually sell their plans directly from within the app and allow you to keep track of data usage. I won't be mentioning any specific ones on here, but I can assure you that I've used them before and they work very well for browsing, map use and less intensive data applications. You might be surprised that the country with the lowest percentage of WhatsApp users is Japan, with only 8.1% of the population using the app. So if you're wanting to make new connections and keep in touch with local Japanese people, then you probably want to have the app Line installed. It mostly works in the same manner as most other messaging apps, so it's not too difficult to use. And as a bonus, you might get discounts by following the accounts of some popular restaurants and establishments. I've highlighted the many apps that I most often use when I travel in Japan, and I know that I've missed many out. So I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section. Not only will you be helping me with my digital Swiss army knife, but you'll be helping others too. So to finish, I'd like to share an extra Google Maps bonus tip. And here it is. As mentioned, Google Maps is also a great way to discover great food and locations. But because we are in Japan after all, most restaurants and locations will be written in Japanese. So if you search for sushi in English, yes, you'll get many listings, but these are from restaurants that have adapted their listings to include the English translation. So if you translate the cuisine, for example, sushi and search in Japanese, you'll have a whole new listing with extra locations that might simply not show up when you're searching in English. Try to search like a local to unlock the local listings. So thanks for watching. I will actually be heading to Japan on a six week epic adventure, creating content and live streaming so that you can see what I get up to. So why not join Team Ninja Monkey and subscribe? It's only a click away and it's free. I hope this has been an informative video that might have brought some insights for your future trips to Japan. And if you've watched this far, how about proving it by simply adding a smartphone emoji to your comment, even if you have nothing to say. Thanks for watching. Till next time, stay positive and be a happy gaijin. Arigatou gozaimasu. Gracias. Thanks. Bye.